It's a warm welcome to everyone joining here today on this live class on what to do about loose skin. Is there anything that can tighten the skin or lift the skin? Nothing is off limits in these live recordings, so keep these questions rolling in. What are your questions around loose skin, crepey skin, not only to the face, but also to the arms, the hands, the top of the knees, the abdomen, after birthing those lovely babies, and earlobes even. I had a really great question come up in a consultation um, the other day about what, what can we do about earlobes? So let me know if you're experiencing sagging skin or crepey skin to any of those areas, the face, the inner arms, the elbows, the knees, the hands, the abdomen, and also the earlobes. Love to hear from you. I'm also going to be doing a challenge coming up soon. Basically, it's going to be two weeks to uh, basically overcome a certain thing that you're that you're wanting to address. And I've been asking a number of you for insights on what you'd like that challenge to be. I've heard a lot about learning more about nutrition in the skin and collagen and sagging skin. So please let me know in the chat here what you'd love to do like a 10 day to two week challenge on to overcome and do a pretty significant deep dive on. No topic is off limits. I'm here to give you what you want and I'm going to give that to you by asking and then you responding and letting me know. All right, let's get into this topic of crepey skin and what happens. Monica says, yes, I would love to do a challenge on collagen and challenge on hyperpigmentation. Yeah, that's a good one, actually. Thank you. Okay, we've heard from Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth. I was with my mother who's 75 and all of her skin is loose. I'm 55 and my knees are... I think you meant to say is showing signs there. Monica, please, Sylvia, skin tightening, Elizabeth, ears, interesting. Yeah, we're going to talk about all these different things. So what's cool about showing up on these live recordings is you get to ask me anything, literally ask me anything, specifically on the topic of what today's recording is all about, which is on loose skin, crepey skin, skin tightening. What causes it? What actually helps to improve crepey skin. Nothing's off limits, so keep these questions rolling in. Hey, Ashley, great to see you. 35 and have noticed my earlobes getting loose as well. Eek. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Okay, well, how about we kick things off with the ear situation? You might notice the only earrings I wear are studs. I don't wear heavy earrings. You will see some celebrities wearing big, chunky earrings, especially when they're at some type of red carpet event and they're getting lots of photos taken. And do you know why they wear these big, chunky earrings at events? They wear those earrings and typically have their hair kind of like loose curls in front of their ears to hide facelift scars. That's why a lot of people wear big, chunky earrings and hair in front of their ears is to hide face, facelift scars, which there's nothing wrong with getting a facelift. Sometimes surgery really is the most durable option and what's going to address the needs of loose sagging skin. We're going to talk about that. But if you are noticing in general, you're wearing these heavy earrings, they're going to stretch and pull down on your earlobes. That's what contributes to sagging earlobes. That's why you pretty much only ever see me wear studs. And they're kind of cute. These are, you know, some pretty, I think they're pink quartz I picked up in Sedona, at, you know, one of their cool shops. Uh, but otherwise, they're just like cute little Tiffany studs or something like that. And yeah, Sylvia, you're right to hide their scars. There's nothing wrong with scars. I mean, we all get scars, right? <laughs> The other thing is ear wrinkles. That's actually, I'm glad that you brought that up because side sleeping actually is going to contribute to the formation of these vertical lines in front of the ears and actually laxity in front of the ears in the preauricular area. That's what we call the front of the ear area. And that's why sleeping on your back is the best position for slowing aging 
and looking and feeling your best for longer on your back because when we side sleep, we're going to be getting a compression of our soft tissue, collagen, elastin, as well as fat, as well as bone. So if you don't want to break down the collagen and elastin that you have, as well as the fat pads and the bone, you want to be sleeping on your back as much as possible. So side sleepers definitely are going to be getting more of those vertical lines right in front of their ears. And then when we have a facelift, my plan is to pull a Jane Fonda without the three facelifts. I might have one as I get a little bit older. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, but when we do all these things from a preventative perspective, and you're never too young, you're never too old to learn these things. That's a question that I did a deep dive on beauty blocks the other day, that sometimes people feel they're a little too old to have some work done or focus on their skincare or do some lasers or injectables or whatever. Uh, bonus points to Deborah for showing up and doing your makeup and using the fabulous makeup that I've recommended and taught you how to do in tutorials. Love this. And hey, Monica, great to see you too. Deborah used to wear big earrings and high pointed shoes. Yikes. Yeah, the, the shoe situation, I primarily wear flats. And if I am going to wear some heels, they're going to be super fabulous and designer for the most part. But I don't wear heels very often uh, because it's terrible for your feet and for your back. But they, it's like eyeliner on your legs. So I'm glad that you mentioned that because sometimes a super sexy set of heels is just it's the icing on the cake for a super fabulous and feminine outfit. But for the most part, I'm in flats with a pointed toe. Sylvia also can make your face asymmetrical if you sleep on the same side. Uh-huh, definitely this can lead to facial asymmetries. Great comment, Sylvia. Monica, what is your experience with facial yoga and massage? Neck sagging is a doozy. Well, for those of you who have had your one-on-one -on -one tutorials or in the membership who have been listening to the show for a while, you know I'm actually not a huge, face of facial, a huge fan of facial yoga. I'm not a huge fan of these apps that are getting you to do these different facial exercises. I mean, number one, you look absolutely ridiculous. If your partner walks in on you, you're you know making sure that door is locked. But number two, with the way that the women, a woman's face ages, is naturally becomes more masculine. The lower face becomes heavier. The masseters from getting being stressed out and clenching your jaw get bigger. The jowls get bigger due to chewing, actually. Aristocratic women in the early 1900s figured out that if they ate softer food, they didn't get as many jowls. Yeah, so I'm not a fan of lower face yoga at all. I just don't think that that's going to be the best use of your time. I'd rather you take that time and do just AM and PM facial lymphatic drainage and massage, which I teach in lesson one in my seasonally specific tutorials and do it consistently every time you're doing your AM and PM skincare routine and take that, you know, 20 minutes you might do doing these ridiculous facial yoga poses and exercises like moving a spoon up and down in your mouth. Come on. If you really think that's going to get rid of the things you're hoping it's going to get rid of, probably not. Um, and those people out there that have these facial yoga apps and courses, they are making bank. Don't be fooled. You're probably seeing their ads and they're making a lot of money. And uh, I think that they're leading to a lot of people feeling really disappointed with the time that they're spending on things. So looking at, say, dermal rolling at home, doing an at-home peel instead, doing things like sleeping on your back, regular facial lymphatic drainage and massage, AM and PM, I think that's a better strategy and uh, making sure that that time and money is going towards something that is going to be researched back, decades backed uh, with the results that you're hoping for. Uh, Elizabeth says, having storms keeps disconnecting. Is my stream okay, everybody? I am kind of in the middle of nowhere here and on a 20-acre farm. And when there's a storm here, the power goes out, which is super fun. Uh, it happens all the time. <laughs> Sylvia, am I cutting in and out? Can anybody else let me know? Just more specific. Sylvia said, yed. I think you mean yes. <laughs> Deborah says, no. Okay, perfect. Thank you. 
I find for me. Thanks, Kim. Love that little check in here. I, I love recording these live because you ask questions I might not think about. I can be kind of stuck in that researcher practitioner mind. So when I hear from you of what you really want to hear and have questions about, I love this. Yes, Elizabeth, uh, leave and come back. That might help out with your stream or do a Zoom update. Okay, so what causes crepey skin? What do you think causes crepey skin? Well, thanks perimenopause, menopause, and postmenopause for the drop in estrogen, which then relates to drop in elastin and collagen formation. What makes elastin and collagen? Those are our fibroblasts. These are cells within our skin that are responsible for creating collagen and elastin. And if our cells don't have the energy that they need to do what they need to do, then you're not going to really have great fibroblast initiation of the production of collagen and elastin. So this is why I'm a huge fan of fueling your body from a nutrition perspective. It's like if you drive a luxury vehicle, you're not going to be putting regular octane fuel in that. You're going to be putting higher octane fuel so that the machine runs better. I want you all to look at yourself like a luxury vehicle, a luxury piece of machinery that's been beautifully created and designed, and it's our job to uh, maintain it and put the right put the right octane in it, put the right fluids in it, and get that regular maintenance. I'm a bit of a petrol head, so my apologies for the car references. I'm sure some of the gentlemen out there will uh, like this analogy. Now, when it comes to the other things that contribute to cellular energy, you've probably heard of NAD. This is something that I do recommend consuming regularly, in fact, daily. Qualia makes a great NAD product. NAD is a, basically it helps to carry electrons on the, in the mitochondria to then tell these hydrogen pumps to make ATP, which is the energy currency of the cell. Now this compound, this compound called NAD is something that decreases in its production and availability in our bodies as we age. So this is something that I do actually recommend that you do supplement. So Qualia NAD, head on over to neurohacker.com forward slash radiance and use code radiance to save on your NAD product. This is something that we know through research declines in the body as we age. If we want our skin to make collagen and elastin to reduce the formation of crepiness that we can see as we age, then we want to give ourselves what it wants in order to make that elastin and collagen by giving those fibroblasts a little extra energy through the mitochondria. Sylvia says, love NAD, but sometimes get a flush. Yeah, I actually experienced this while I was at an event last week, and I actually thought I was having an allergic reaction to something. <laughs> you know, I was trying to figure out why do I feel like a little bit like hot and flushed. It's like, oh, I took the NAD way earlier than I usually do and before I ate anything. That's the only time I've experienced that is because I took it a couple hours earlier than I usually do and I hadn't eaten anything. I was in a hotel room, so I didn't have my regular protein and collagen in my coffee. And yeah, I felt that. And it was uh, pretty interesting. I actually took an antihistamine because I'm like, oh my gosh, am I having some type of reaction to the lemon that I made my hot water honey and lemon at this event or the, the hotel coffee, you know, that you know is garbage. Anyway, it's really funny. Uh, so that's a little trick if you are going to take NAD is that it can cause flushing. It's not something, you know, terrible or intense or anything like that. Just have it. I would say I do really well when I take my NAD at about 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. during the day and have had something in my system that, because the only time I've had that is when I had it early and had nothing in my system. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting uh, when that happens. Okay, so let's also talk about crepiness to the neck because that came up as well. So what happens to the neck is you'll even notice these horizontal necklace lines on teens. We get the formation, everybody does, these horizontal necklace lines because we're looking down. Now a little quick tip for those of you who want a snatched jawline is 
why the heck do we look at our phones like this? You know, I mentioned this before, but why do we do this? Why do we hold the phone way down at like our stomach and have our, this, this is a great way to make yourself look unattractive, by the way, is to like have this hump and looking down when you're looking at your phone, just bring your phone up, bring your phone up to your face. You might look a little weird to other people, but whatever you're saving your neck. Because when we look down, when we're reading or sitting or in a position, it's terrible posture. It's going to be terrible for your cervical spine and upper back anyways. So good ergonomics always is holding your phone up. Something super simple. The other thing that can happen to the neck to contribute to sagging and looseness, I wrote a paper on jawline rejuvenation in case you're thinking, you know, does Rachel really know about this topic? <laughs> yeah, I wrote a jawline rejuvenation paper because there was a product that came out on the market a number of years ago to kill fat cells. But it was thousands of dollars required, three to four treatments, and you looked like a bullfrog for a month. Doesn't sound like something I'd really personally want to do, and it was super new and right near the thyroid. So what can contribute to sagging and fullness to the chin or even you know something like a double chin is we have glands underneath our chin, our submandibular glands. It, it's responsible for creating saliva in your mouth. And then we also have these muscles, these platysma bands. So you'll see me flex my neck. So these platysma bands run vertically. And when we flex these muscles, we get the horizontal necklace lines. So it's not only the soft tissue, collagen and elastin changes to the neck that contribute to crepey skin to the neck. It's also the underlying muscles. And then the fullness under the chin is related to a gland. Yes, there can be some fat there too. There can be some um, sagging as well. That's sometimes a good old fashioned facelift is uh, what's going to take care of that. And <laughs> I see you playing with your chin there, Monica. That's super cute. Um, okay, Monica, mine are terribly marked. Been since I was younger, just gotten a little worse from doing facials. I think looking down. Are you a practitioner, Monica? Oh, cool. Yeah, you're going to want to join my masterclass. It's actually happening right after this. Go head on over to... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great to see you. Yeah, for those of you other practitioners out there, is if you're listening to this, this is very much information for those of us who want to look good, right? And if you're a practitioner and you do this rejuvenation and you're looking to up your game, head on over to buildingyourbeautybrand.com and that's buildingyourbeautybrand.com and join the live and free masterclass I'm hosting with colleague Christy and I to uh, support you in your practice because what I'm finding a lot of times with clients who I work with in the clinic and also online for many years is people are really looking for the modern medical aesthetics patient is looking for someone that isn't just going to want to fill their face up with Botox and fillers. They really want someone to take a look at them and say, hey, how can we improve skin health, sagging skin, thinning skin, collagen and elastin, not just with what's in the clinic, but lifestyle, what we're doing day in and day out at home, which I would say is just as impactful as what we do in the clinic. They, they need to be married. And I've been told I'm one of the first to blend the very Western medical aesthetics world with the integrative functional and biohacking world, which is pretty cool. So for those horizontal necklace lines, sometimes adjusting the muscles with some neuromodulators, sometimes doing a little bit of hyaluronic acid dermal filler, sometimes doing some biostimulator as well to create a framework and a network and a scaffold for collagen and elastin to form on. A couple of different options as well as lasers. We're gonna talk a little bit about lasers of which ones work and which ones don't because my whole intention for you while being here is to be a more conscious consumer. To no longer buy products and get gadgets and gizmos, these magic bullets that are um, claiming to do everything but really aren't gonna do anything. And you see a lot of ads for these types of products on your social media. And then you buy it because you saw a compelling before and after photo, but it's just all smoke and mirrors in Photoshop. A lot of times I see these photos for skin tightening, eye rejuvenation products, supplements, or gadgets. And I can easily tell that 
the individual in the after photo had eyelid surgery or a facelift or injectables, right? If it seems too good to be true, it is too good to be true. Okay. So we've talked about the earlobes, we've talked about the neck, and what I do want to mention is Elizabeth, the needling is helping. Yes, dermal rolling at home. This is such a great time and cost-effective solution and option to support more collagen and elastin happening daily. So you can do dermal rolling at home two to five times a week, and then your skincare you're doing all the time too. So at home, dermal rolling, microneedling is different than say using a gua sha tool or a jade roller because this is using little needles to again tell those fibroblasts to make the elastin and collagen. And new collagen takes about three months to form and mature collagen six to eight months to form. So thank you for sharing, Elizabeth, that your uh, at-home microneedling is helping. I noticed the difference uh, the next day and the only place I teach the microneedling dermal rolling tutorial, the roller and the stamper on the face, eyelids, lips, neck, chest, hands, inner arms, elbows, and knees is in my seasonal tutorials. Jan, wondering what gua sha tool you recommend for using on legs, not face. I know when I'm in the sauna, just grab a Chinese ceramic soup spoon. It's got that smooth, hard edge to it because you basically just want to help smooth out that fascia um, for things like cellulite. So the healthier our skin is, the healthier our fascia is, the better our lymphatics are working, the better we are fueled from a nutrient perspective, the lower our oxidative stress status is, inflammation and the consumption of anti-nutrient foods, the better we're going to look, the better we're going to feel, and the slower we're going to age. So it's not just one thing. Monica, going to school for nursing to go deeper. You're an esthetician looking to become an aesthetic nurse. That's great. Reach out to me. I'll help you out. Uh, send me a direct email, info at theschoolofradiance.com. Okay, Sylvia has a question around stem cell therapy, fat grafting, really cool mix, Morpheus 8, the angel lift and arm lift. There's lots of options. So things with the stem cell exosome and peptide space. I'm really excited to see in the next 10 years have really dialed in protocols and products because the way that stem cells and exosomed, exosomes are derived, it differs on the company and the lab that's actually processing these that are typically taken uh, from your own body, from your own fat, from your own bone, or they're taken from perinatal tissue from the hospital after a woman's given birth. Mm. <laughs> a placenta is worth a lot of money, ladies. Uh, I'm definitely going to be keeping mine and, and uh, doing some cool stuff with that when the time is right. So yes, there are lots of options. It's always going to be a mix. Yes, there's things like Morpheus 8. There's things like the Cyton Pro Fractional, Halo, Moxie, 4 Collagen, Photona, Pro Fractional. There's so many different options for promoting collagen in the skin. Um, and also you mentioned here, Sylvia, an arm lift. Sometimes for the inner arm, yes, an arm lift is potentially what's actually gonna solve the problem, especially if you've lost a lot of weight. I pretty much see this all the time. In a woman who's over 45 or 50, this laxity that starts to happen in the inner arm area so what I do is every time I'm doing my dermal rolling and I show you in the tutorials how to roll, do your inner arms at the same time, as well as right in front of your bra strap to keep that collagen and elastin. Watch the deodorant that you're using. If you're using a deodorant with aluminum, uh, it's really important that we all detox from aluminum and shout out to things like baking soda. Make sure you're using a cleaner version of it that doesn't have aluminum because this is something that is in baking soda, but you do want to avoid things like aluminum. Um, there are different forms of aluminum. That's an aluminum salt. Um, that's a little bit different than straight up aluminum. Um, so the, the whole reason I'm mentioning the quality of deodorant that you're using is if you're using a deodorant that has lots of toxins in it, then what happens is that whole skin is going to be negatively impacted by that. And I had one of my, you've probably seen this, this 
blue dress that I love to wear. Now this, this blue dress, you've probably seen on me wearing it in social media. And you know, this was a really expensive blue silk dress that I picked up uh, in Palm Beach. And it was, it was a big treat to myself and I've worn it so many times. I've worn it in like almost every photo. <laughs> You'll see this blue dress everywhere. And when I would go to events, I would actually wear a deodorant that uh, wouldn't perspire because I'm on stage. I don't want these sweat marks from wearing silk. But I took it to the dry cleaner and they said, we can't actually get this out because it stained the blue dye on the silk. So just think about that for a second. If these antiperspirants are damaging silk, imagine how much they're damaging your biology. Right. So there's actually these really neat inserts that you can wear. So instead of wearing an antiperspirant, you just wear these like little pad inserts in your underarm area. So you can still wear a clean deodorant and not smell or anything like that, but you'll still sweat a bit. That's how your body detoxes, by the way. That's why I'm not a huge fan of these rejuvenation options that stop sweating in the axilla because our body needs to sweat. Our lymph is literally doing its thing to detox and we don't want to interfere with that. So when you hear about all these new rejuvenation things or things that are available in the clinic, you kind of want to hit pause and just make sure it's been on the market for a while before doing anything new. Krista, is there a body roller that you can recommend? Yes, I do have a body roller on my skin shop as well as clean deodorants and personal care products. Skincare, the makeup that Deborah is using. <laughs> Hair care, hair growth stimulating products. I love that you're doing a get ready with me on our Zoom uh, live recording here. So yes, I do have a body roller. It's, it's a lot wider, so you can cover a larger uh, area of the body. But you can also use your face roller for the body too, with the exception of when you go to dermal roll your scalp for hair loss, you want a separate roller because the scalp and the hair, the hairs are gonna dull your roller faster. Deborah, will the body dermal rolling really help my crepey skin at my age? It's going to provide an improvement and support that stimulation of the fibroblast making elastin and collagen. We're always looking for an improvement. Nothing is going to do what surgery is going to do. But even after surgery, if you do have an arm lift, you're going to want to dermal roll over those scars. So it's a combination approach is always, in my opinion, going to be the win and combining everything. But I've seen lots of my clients over the years that do dermal rolling that are 60 to mid nineties and they have the best skin. I've literally seen 60, 70 year old women that dermal roll two to five nights a week for years that have more collagen and have thicker skin than those in their twenties and thirties. Seriously can't make this stuff up. Why would I want to make this stuff up, right? So that's why I love it as a really simple time and cost effective solution for supporting more collagen and elastin. Because when that starts to go down, that's what causes creepiness to the skin. That's what also contributes to sagging and lax skin is that loss of collagen and elastin. So looking at the research for visible skin changes, it's about 10 to 12 grams of collagen per serving is what you want daily. And I just wrote a nutrition paper um, that I'll be doing a run through pretty soon here too. Uh, okay. And again, age, the age thing, you're always worth it. You're a human with a heart, with a soul, who's looking to get the most out of your life. You're never too old for anything with the exception of maybe a mini skirt. <laughs> I, I have seen uh, some women in their, in their 80s that are dressing like they're 25 and about to hit the club. I kid you not. Um, my read on these women is that there's also some psychological things going on, some body dysmorphia. They're just like, with the circles that they roll in, they've had the multiple facelifts. They're, they're never feeling like they're good enough. Now, that being said, just dress in a way that feels good for you. But also there's this element of being a beautiful, radiant, elegant, stylish woman and man too. And I'd say dressing, my favorite lengths of skirts are not mini skirts. I'm 37. I, I could rock a mini skirt if I want. You know, I rock from the pickleball little squirt situation in the summertime. But typically a skirt is going to be just above the knee 
or just below the knee, but I'm not wearing those mini skirts. Okay, Krista says, what do you think of the Lima laser? I have yet to come across a single individual who has shared that they like it. <laughs> um, but this is something that you'll see a lot of ads for, right? You'll see this in the magazines. You'll see this on social media ads, the, the Lima laser. You know, I'm not showing up here to pick on somebody else's brand and company that may very well be looking to create products and technologies that that work. Um, but what's cool about the fact that I do these one-on-one -on -one sessions online for so many individuals across the globe for years before people even knew what Zoom was, um, why are you talking to this person in Germany in the room talking about your skin? Like it just didn't kind of compute. I do have a pretty good track record for seeing the writings on the wall of where things are going before they happen, whether at Zoom, whether that's online skincare and e-commerce, whether that's also right now, especially the future of where medical aesthetics is going with the integration of integrative functional and biohacking for the win. We're seeing a ton of med spas um, that are doing really well and attracting the modern medical aesthetics patient incorporating these things because this is exactly what people want. They're looking for how to actually have healthy skin, not just look like everybody else. Monica, what serums do you suggest for body dermal rolling? Yeah, in the dermal rolling tutorial, I get into the products that I like to recommend for body rolling, and that's going to include in ingredients like lactic acid, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E. And the Dermalac and the A, C, and E body oil on my skin shop, I love those for body rolling, but there's a specific order and some things to consider because there is lactic acid in one of the products, which can create a lot of stinging with dermal rolling. So there's a method to the madness. Just join my tutorials if you wanna see me talk about and do dermal rolling. That's the only place I talk about it. I'm not gonna take YouTube into my bathroom and watch me get ready. Like, forget it, that's not my style. Uh, <laughs> Delilah, any recommendations for skin laxity above the knee? Yes, dermal rolling for the win. Again, you can do some lasers above the knee too. I have actually done this for a number of my clients that actually lasered the legs. Um, sometimes a little bit of hyaluronic acid filler can be helpful for those deeper lines above the knees too. But really being consistent when you're putting your skincare products on. I mentioned that every day I put my leftover skincare from my face, neck, chest, and hands actually on my inner arm and on my shoulders, just day in and day out peels, retinols, dermal rolling to any area you want to focus on, whether that's your knees or your elbows or your inner arms, ear lobes, you know, once the damage is done, you've been wearing those heavy earrings, you've been a side sleeper for decades. Sometimes a little bit of dermal filler can just oh, put back some of that lost volume. Um, and sometimes, you know, surgery is required too. It just, it, it just depends. But above the knee is really common because when we wear those skirts that are above the knee or those mini skirts, we're not doing the skin on our legs any favors because of the sun damage. And sun damage and also blue light damage is something else that contributes to loss of collagen and elastin. You probably didn't think of blue light, but actually the blue light reaches about three times deeper in the skin than the UV from the sun rays do. That's why you want to use your skincare and your sunscreen day in and day out, even if you're kicking it at home on Zoom calls, or if you have an anxious avoided attachment style and you're sensitive to the Schumann and you're an intuitive empath and you're staying inside way too long. We want to make sure that you're getting, sometimes I say things under my breath intentionally, and some of you are going to pick up on what I said that resonate with it. And those of you who kind of don't really care about any of those things, it's just going to kind of slip slip past your awareness. And I do that. I do that in, intentionally. Uh, I go a little bit deeper on some things. Okay. Sylvia, what about moisturizing creams, wrinkled knees, help with collagen, biostimulator, fillers, peptides, vitamin C, thread lift. Yeah. I mean, the list goes on with what's available. The, the thing is, 
What I like to do is look at optimizing your home care and doing heavy lifting. So depending on when you're listening to this, so if you're listening to this, say between January to October, that is the time to really focus on your home care and then look at the fall winter as the time to do more in-clinic lasers and things like that. Now, with the exception of some lasers that stimulate collagen that you can do throughout the year, it doesn't matter if you have a tan or not. Um, but again, that's a little bit more covered in the one-on-one -on -one and tutorials, uh, what to do at what season. But yes, there's always new things coming out with fillers, peptides, vitamin C antioxidants, thread lifts, this new laser, that new laser, this new gadget. We want to do things that work. And it's again, it's never going to be one thing. Even if you do elect to do surgery for a facelift, for an inner thigh lift, for um, an arm lift, you're still going to want to complement the health of the skin with your skincare, dermal rolling, and healthy living practices. And I would also argue that by bolstering up the way that you live, the way that you eat, you're going to feel better and your skin cells, your cells in general are going to be better supported so that when you do the home stuff, you're kind of doing the heavy lifting. And then when you choose to do things in the clinic, the clinic stuff is going to take care of what's left over. And even before a facelift or some type of surgery, it's also helpful to get the health of the skin up with thickening the skin with the promotion of collagen and elastin formation so that when the skin is pulled back, we don't have these horizontal pull lines. If the skin's lost that collagen and elastin, it gets pulled back. Uh, even after face up, you're still likely going to want to continue with other non-surgical facial rejuvenation things like neuromodulators and fillers. So even surgery isn't the be all end all option for everybody. It's in my opinion, always going to be a combination approach. The deal with thread lifts is again, it's still pretty new. Some practitioners love thread lifts. Some don't, they are pretty temporary and they can be expensive. Uh, we see a lot of issues with thread lifts when they're applied into the nose, it can actually be rejected, but more to that is I'd say more related to someone's overall health. If someone's dealing with autoimmune conditions or underlying cancers or, you know, their cortisol and stress and their life is a mess, their hormones are off, you know, those individuals are likely going to be in that category of somebody who has an adverse event that has something happen after rejuvenation or has this type of response that uh, wasn't anticipated, which is why I'm writing my research papers to provide awareness on this topic in the medical aesthetics community. First is always health. Secondary is gonna be rejuvenation. If you have underlying health stuff, you're just not feeling great, you're tired, you're sluggish, you know, something's not quite right, deal with that. While you're in that stage, focus on your skincare, your dermal rolling, and healthy living as best you can. But with those who have underlying conditions, like especially autoimmune stuff, um, this can be just sort of that one thing that adds to the toxic bucket and someone could have an issue after. So I really did want to emphasize that point because rejuvenation isn't for everybody at all. Like I can never say anything is safe and effective for everybody. I can't even say that with a cream because someone could have some type of response to an agent in that cream, like a vitamin C. Some people have more responses than others to things like vitamin C, which is why I recommend before integrating an antioxidant serum, you focus on your basics first, cleanse, moisturize, sunscreen, scrub, maybe add an eye cream. After a couple of weeks, then add serums then add peels, then add retinols. Retinols also isn't something that I'll say is great for everybody too, because some people have different responses to vitamin A than others. So that's why it's a little tricky on these, on these um, classes here, these, these calls, podcast recordings for me to make blanket statements, because it's just not something that can be done. Krista, are there any peptides that you recommend? Yes, peptides have been utilized in practitioner grade skincare for a long time. And peptides are something that is actually made in the body already. And we can either supplement those peptides orally, 
topically in a cream or inject it, or use frequency to tell the body to make more of it to do different things. And so BPC-157 is something that's um, commonly looked at in the biohacker community to reduce inflammation. Melanotan is a peptide that is used in different places in the world more than others. Uh, if you go to the South, say for example in Florida, something like melanotan is more available to actually produce more melanin in the skin. It's called the Barbie peptide because it does a couple of different things. It suppresses appetite and it also enhances libido in the central nervous system and reduces inflammation and results in more melanin to be produced. And then from those four pathways, another peptide was derived for the men that was that central nervous system libido pathway, and that's called PT-141. These are some of the most commonly talked about peptides, uh, BBC-157, melanotan, or PT-141. Uh, but there's other peptides in skincare. So say, for example, argireline, matrixyl 3000, there's copper peptide, for example. Lots of different peptides are available in skincare. Peptides are not new in practitioner-grade skincare. It's been in the game for decades, it's nothing new. So when you come across a skincare product that says, oh, it has this innovative peptide in it, innovative skincare with peptides, like this is not new stuff, it's just marketing and it's, it irritates me to no end. <laughs> in a really good, well-formulated practitioner grade product, there's already peptides in it. They don't even need to shout it from the mountaintops because it's nothing new. Sylvia, would a peel help for loose skin? like the like a prx t33 non peel peels non peel peels huh, that's interesting that's some clever marketing non peel peels um well there's some things like fennel peels on the market which are super intense you basically look like and this has to be done under anesthetic and by a doctor and some people do have issues with um, some of their organs for detoxing the fennel after but the fennel peel, holy smokes, this is like taking 10 years off somebody. But you literally have this like hardened, crusty shell on your face for like 20 days. And then you're quite red and puffy afterwards. But it is it is um, pretty remarkable. I know some plastic surgeons that do fennel peels and they are pretty incredible. Uh, but again, if there's liver and kidney stuff, the, you're not going to be a good candidate for that. Krista, what exactly is the Environ DF Mobile electrosonic device for? If trying to get the best bang for one's buck, is this device worth the money? Thanks for asking this question, Krista. The DF Mobile is something that I teach in lesson seven in my skincare tutorials that uses technology called sonophoresis to allow peptides and antioxidants to be pushed into the dermis in one application. The DF mobile on my skin shop, I don't typically talk about in a one-on-one -on -one because it's just a little too deep to get into, uh, but I do talk about this and show you how to use it in lesson seven of my seasonal skincare tutorials. I like it because I notice a difference when I use it. I like to use it in the AM, do my dermal rolling in the PM, and I do notice that it just makes my skin look brighter, a little bit lifted. So when it comes to other devices on the market, you're going to see new face and things like that. And um, all these other different things. This is completely different. This is using sonophoresis to open up gated channels in your skin cells to allow peptides and antioxidants to be absorbed into the dermis. When you apply a product for about a month, then it's reaching the dermis. So instead of applying a product for a month, you apply the product, use the DF mobile with it, it pushes in, into the dermis at that time, which is pretty cool. It was taken from in-clinic uh, rejuvenation tech to handheld uh, a number of years ago now. Sylvia, there's so much out there, lots of exciting advances. I know that's what's so cool about the skin and beauty and rejuvenation space is that it's constantly evolving with peptides and exosomes and stem cells and all these things that, you know, really now where we are with that stuff, I feel like is where Botox was in the 90s. And so much has come 
during that time. We've seen different neuromodulators on the market. We've seen different applications of it, different sites, different dosing ranges. Uh, ranges. It's, it's pretty cool how all this stuff constantly evolves. And it's very much a, a full-time job, me keeping up with it and being an instructor and researcher myself and presenting on these topics. Deborah, what about red light masks? Great question. If you were to think of anybody in the biohacking and beauty space to talk about red light masks, you'd probably think of me. Do you ever see me posing in a red light face mask? Mm -mm. I don't want to look like a stormtrooper to my partner or terrify small kids. <laughs> I'm a much bigger fan of, for example, getting a big red light panel. I did my red light therapy last night before going to sleep. So instead of getting a mask, I would just get like a, a panel so that you're actually getting larger areas of the body impacted. About 10 minutes a time at a time, six inches away from the panel is pretty typical. What red light does for the skin is it uses light energy to tell the mitochondria to make more ATP, helps with blood flow, inflammation, all sorts of cool things. There's actually quite a bit of research on red light now, but I don't recommend the masks that go over the face and neck. I would just recommend the panels so that you're doing your whole face, neck, chest, hands. I do like red light in my eyes actually too, by the way. Sylvia, does infrared or near infrared help with loose skin? Such a great question, you guys. I love you all. Um, we're going to wrap up in just a second here because I got to teach practitioners after this. <laughs> I would say that near infrared and far infrared is going to be good for the skin because you're detoxing. And the skin is the largest detox organ. So keeping your body free, not completely free, but reduce toxins by sweating by heating up from the inside out, which is what these types of saunas do, as opposed to the outside in from traditional just heat and steam saunas. Um, absolutely, the less oxidative stress you experience, the better your skin's gonna look and the better you're gonna feel. Sylvia, what about senolytics? Can that help with the skin? In my opinion, yes, because when we have areas of pigmentation and melasma from sun damage and hormones and things like that, basically there's this overproduction of this like cluster of melanin in the skin. So if we think about pruning the leaves off a tree, we can also think about this for pigmentation too. If we have senolytics, like the qualia senolytics that you can also find on my biohacking page it stimulates autophagy it stimulates pruning those cells that just aren't functioning properly to go so i would argue that senolytics could potentially and autophagy be helpful for hyperpigmentation and melasma okay so this is monica what is your class offer practitioners it's about building your authority online and highlighting what is happening in the medical aesthetic space and how to stay current in the medical aesthetic space. So that's the work that I do with a colleague of mine to teach practitioners how to show up and uh, really offer and care for their patients in meaningful ways. So if you are listening, you're a practitioner, head on over to buildingyourbeautybrand.com and join our next live class. Really fun, we get to hang out and I like to connect with practitioners that tune into the show because there's a lot of you, which is a compliment. And uh, a lot of you fellow med spa practitioners that actually book one-on-ones with me and take my tutorials to see how I support people. Rising tide lifts all boats. All right, that's a wrap. I gotta teach you know, the practitioners here. Sylvia, awesome information, Rachel. Really appreciate you sharing, thanks so much. Well, thank you to each and every one of you for your questions and your comments ask and you shall receive. I show up, you show up, we all show up. Here is the beautiful part of all this. We're worth it. We're beautiful humans here. We have families, loved ones, people who depend on us. We're looking to really get the most out of this life. And there's nothing wrong with desiring to look and feel our best in the process. You'd be doing yourself a disservice if you didn't see yourself as valuable enough to do so. Then there's some deep psychological work to be done there, trauma release, all sorts of things. So thank you. Hey, Michelle, we got a School of Radiance member in the house. So we go deeper on some of those more emotional things that I mentioned for really cultivating deep beauty and radiance. So 
check out everything over at theschoolofradiance.com, one-on-ones, tutorials, membership, uh, those are all available. Sylvia says, totally agree. Kim says, thanks so much. My pleasure. Love you all so much. Thanks for showing up, asking these great questions. Makes it fun for me too. And be sure to subscribe, share this episode with a friend, family, loved one, and do something today that brings you joy and brings you peace and fun and is something good for you and your body today to look great and feel fantastic in the process. All right. See you all again very soon right here on the School of Radiance podcast.